Hi, this is Mike again from Scratch, and welcome to another Godot tutorial. This one actually comes in direct response to uh, a reader request, or actually a viewer request, uh, asking me, um, they've got a setting in their scene, basically, and if there's something that gets in between their camera and the object they're uh, looking at, they want to make that object invisible, and they want to know how to go about doing this in Godot. Uh, they were on the right track with ray casting, and that's exactly what you do. Uh, it's a matter of uh, how you go about doing it. So that's what we're looking at today. We're looking at uh, ray casting in 3D in Godot. Now, ray casting is basically just shooting a beam off into the scene and seeing what it hits. It's used all the time. Um, AI often uses ray casting for uh, figuring out what's in front of it. Uh, as you see here, we're using it for the camera to determine visibility, etc. Ray casts are pretty much the way you see in the scene. So it's an important thing, and it's not immediately obvious how you do this in Godot. So that's exactly what we're going to look at today. Now you'll notice if you've been following along the tutorial series to this point, um, Godot is going to look a little bit different. That's because I just switched up to the beta of the second uh, of Godot 2.0, which should be out any day now. Um, so all of the stuff that I do here will work in an earlier version of Godot. So things are going to be in slightly different places. So don't worry too much if it looks jarringly different than what you've got. Um, it's just the newer version. And again, all of this functionality, all of the code, everything will work in a previous version. Speaking of the code, uh, there's a text-based version of this tutorial variable on Game From Scratch. I will link it in the comments down below. All right, so let's continue on. First things first, we're going to need to go ahead and create a project. Uh, we'll call this C colon slash temp and browse. Let's go ahead and hey you. C colon slash temp. And let's create a folder called Raycast Godot. Open and create. So open up our new project and here we go. So welcome to Godot 2. As I said, this should be out any day now. Um, but if you want, if you build from sources, this is what you will get right now. Uh, so let's go ahead. We'll add a node to our scene. Uh, again, I assume you've watched all the previous tutorials in the series, so I don't explain anything I've already covered. Uh, if I do something that you don't follow along, check the earlier tutorials in the scene, in, sorry, in the series, it's probably covered somewhere. Uh, so what we're gonna have to do is each item that's gonna be potentially hit by a raycast needs to be a physics object, it needs to be available to the physics server so that it actually can do the testing. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a very simple scene made up of uh, cubes, and each of those cubes is going to have a rigid body, uh, with gravity turned off, we could also accomplish the same thing by basically uh, making them static objects. But in this case, I'm going to go with rigid body with no gravity. Um, so each one's going to be a rigid body, contain a test cube, and then a bounding volume or a collision uh, surface. Um, we covered this already in a previous tutorial on 3D. So let me just quickly go ahead and create them. So first things first, we need our rigid body. And then it has a test cube. And it has... Uh, a collision polygon. Uh, nope, collision shape. Okay, so we have our rigid body sets up. It's got the test cube, so we can actually see something. And then we got to define the shape. The shape needs to be da, 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 a box shape, like so. Uh, so now we want to do go ahead and create that hierarchy again. Here, we'll just do a copy. And I'll call this guy rigid body two, just so we're staying consistent with the text version. So as you can see, we've got a test cube, a collision shape, a test cube and a collision shape. Now I'm gonna take the second one and let's, let's move our camera slightly. So we're just gonna move it out and up like so. Now we need a camera for our scene. This is where the rigid body is going, sorry, the uh, test ray or the, uh, the ray cast is going to originate from our camera and through both of these objects. Uh, so now let's go ahead and add a camera to our scene. So, and now our camera, before we move it, we want to attach the raycast. So, raycast. Now you'll notice there are 2D and 3D versions of everything we're dealing with. Uh, we obviously want the non-2D version. Uh, so here's our camera, we'll move it up and over like so. Oops, undo that, select the actual camera, move it up and over. Like so, let's angle it down so we're seeing through our one object and the other object like so. So there's the camera angle. Now we wanna go ahead and take our ray cast and we're gonna extend the ray cast out. Now the ray cast casts two and we're gonna change this. We're not gonna go 
uh, negative one. Instead, we're gonna go with the Z axis. And this is gonna be the length of your calf. So I'm gonna go with 11. And you'll see there is our array now. You can set that value to whatever you wish. Now, the nice thing is since I, I moved both of these, I did the translations after um, creation so that the child is taking all the translations from the uh, parent, making this math very simple for us. So if we wanted a smaller length ray, we could obviously set this to like so, and you see the end result. Um, it doesn't particularly matter. In this case though, it has to hit this guy. It has to hit rigid body two because that's what we're going to test against. So what we want to do here is test to see if anything happens between this camera and the origin at zero, zero, and zero. And how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to do this obviously with some code. So your scene is set up now. We have our proper, we have two entities, uh, virtual bodies defined so they can be hit with a collision. Uh, now we just need to check the ray cast. And in order to do this, let's go ahead and add a script to our camera. Um, so, get rid of the gibberish. So, all right. So first things first, let us define a variable for our array. And our array equals get node array cast, right? So we're just basically gonna get a reference to this guy just for convenience sake. Next thing up, we have an update loop. So handle process equals true. Oops. So now let's define our process variable. Now, uh, I'm gonna add some logic right away so we can pan our camera around. Uh, dot is key pressed key up, key yo, all right, missed by one, key up. And if it is, we will just take ourself, translate vector three, and we'll just move very slightly up the Y axis. This way our camera can move and it'll move our attached ray, which in turn will cause a hit and not hit. So we can actually see that this is actually working. Uh, so now let's do copy and paste here and handle the same thing for down. Just switch that out to a minus and we're good to go. Now that that's handled, let us go ahead and check with our ray. So first thing we do is check to see if our ray dot is enabled. All right, I obviously have some kind of an error. Let's see, what are you pissed off at? Ah, this, all right. Typo, typo, all right, should be happy. Yeah, so if is enabled and ray dot is colliding. So this is gonna check to see if the ray is currently hitting something or not. Now that first part is key. This means that the ray is currently actually on. And right now it actually isn't. So let's go on back here and in the property set enabled to true. And I'm back over to our script. So there is our logic there. So we're gonna check that it is enabled, which we obviously just saw that yes, it is. Um, and I'm gonna do some gross hackery here just for the demonstration purposes. Your game logic would obviously be much less hard coded than what I'm about to do, but uh, this keeps it short and simple. So first we're gonna do collided with object equals and then ray dot get Collider. So Collider is going to take a reference to what was hit. Now, obviously this is only going to be true if we currently hit something. So this will always be true. Now, uh, if it, okay, so that checks to see what is being collided with. So now we're going to, we know that we've got an object of some kind. Uh, we actually know what it is. So we're going to cheat a little bit. So uh, collided with object dot get name equals rigid body two. So if we are hitting our second rigid body, hide it. Like so. So basically if the ray is hitting it, make it invisible. Otherwise, and here's the otherwise, and here's some more gross hackery. Rigid body two dot show. All right, so there is our logic. Basically, uh, we check to see uh, if our array collides with anything. If it does, we check the name of what it was, and 
what it was is determined by the git collider. Um, and we take that reference. If it is, in fact, the one we think it might be, we go ahead and hide it. Otherwise, we make sure that that thing is actually visible. Uh, this logic kind of sucks. It's going to cause some flickering. But for the most part, it's going to demonstrate what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and save that like so. And go on back, set up our scene. Like so. I always forget something, but I don't know if I have now. Go ahead and run this. Oh yeah, I did forget something. I forgot to turn gravity off. So let's head on back. Rigid body one, gravity scale, zip. Rigid body two, gravity scale is zip. Let me make sure that's stuck for the first one. It did. All right, let's go ahead and run that again. So now we've got obviously only the one body is visible because this collision is true. So let's hit the up arrow until our ray All right, where's my logic going wrong here? One second. Interesting, and I'm not exactly sure what the logic is here, but when I truncated this down to uh, minus five or minus six I had, so that wasn't passing all the way through, um, it's causing this collision not to actually trigger. So um, make sure your cast two goes all the way through um, and to the point. So when I made the shorter version, for some reason, it's not triggering the actual um, condition. So I'm, I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. I'll have to research it. Maybe I'll put it in the comments below when I figure out what's going on. Uh, but now with that actually in place, here I'm going to show you what happens without a collision. We have our two objects, like so, one in front of the other, and our camera on arrow is going through. So now Take that out, put that back in. So in the event that an occlusion occurs, we hide it. So you can see we're, we're hiding it and unhiding it. Our logic is kind of poor because we're uh, basically show and hide, show and hide, show and hide over and over and over again. But you'll see once that's not hitting, it's shown, hide, etc. So that is um, basically a raycast in action. Now, again, our logic isn't isn't beautiful, you would probably do something much, much cleaner than this. But that is essentially it. That is raycasting, how raycasting can be used to detect things in the scene. Uh, you'll notice it's returning the first collision it um, achieves. Now, let's go ahead and show um, the ability to do this completely in code. So here we're actually we had to create this ray in the scene, this guy right here, we created uh, as a node. Now you can do this entirely code based and let's look at that instead. Now this requires a little bit of a logic change. Um, we're gonna be using the built-in physics server. Now the physics server can only be pulled, uh, one, the call we need to make is space get, um, get direct state and that can only be called during um, an integrated forces or fixed process call. So what we need to do is just set set process instead to set fixed process like so and then ditto up here like that and we're gonna, we're gonna use the same logic for up and down just instead of using the ray like we did here and I'll replace this code and we're gonna create the ray instead using code um, and as I said earlier we're gonna use the physics server for first we got to get this uh, direct state from the physics server so physics server and then space get direct state. This needs to be passed the world ID. We can get the world ID from get world dot get space. Sorry, it needs space ID. So like that. So now we got the direct state of the physics world. We're gonna check for collisions in it. So direct um, create a var called collisions. This is a dictionary that is returned from direct state dot intersect ray. And we're going to send an array um, from our current location of our camera to the origin, like so. Uh, so basically, we're just creating a line from our camera to the origin, or, or 0, 0, 0 in our world, and we're checking for collisions. And if there are collisions, that dictionary will have a size. So if collisions.size and collisions 
as I said, it's a dictionary. One of the values in the, in the dictionary is going to be position, and another one is collider. Collider is the entity that gets collided with. So we're going to go ahead and check collider dot get name equals rigid body two, like so. And if that is the case, that means we collided with our rigid body two, and we'll get our entity again. So this is the object collided with inside the dictionary. Just go ahead and hide it. Otherwise, a little bit more gross hackery. Like so. So this is the programmatic way of accomplishing the same thing. Minus the colon. Go ahead and run that. And as you see, not being intersected intersected being hidden and quickly shown. Again, the logic kind of sucks. You would rather use a toggle and no intersection, intersection, no intersection. So that is raycasting in Godot. Very, very handy, very, very useful things. Basically, if you are going to be um, looking for entities in the scene, uh, checking visibility, seeing if the player can see something else without something in between colliding, that is what you use. You use raycast. Now, keep in mind, 2D has the same functionality, almost the exact same mannerisms, except for a little bit easier to use actually, and the names um, end with 2D. So it's uh, physics server 2D, it's uh, Raycast 2D, etc. But otherwise, it's basically the same logic. Uh, so that's about it. That's all we're going to cover for today. Hope that was useful. Uh, once again, there is a text based version. Um, I will link it down below. I will also link to the entire series itself, both here on YouTube and on Game From Scratch. Hope you enjoyed that. See you later. Bye.